Hello, this is Charting Man Dan of The Chart Guys, where we teach the little guy and girl how to utilize charts to manage their own trades and investments. What do I mean by the little guy and girl? Well, we just had two directives signed halting the implementation of a rule that requires financial advisors to act in the best interests of their client. Let that sink in a little bit. The big wigs on Wall Street can play with your retirement and hard-earned money without your best interests at heart. We currently have hundreds of members taking charge of their financial future, and we would love for you to come check out a free week with no credit card required to see if our services would be beneficial on your path to financial independence as well. What we offer, we have a separate course of over five hours in length on when to enter and exit positions. And in terms of what we do daily, we have nightly videos, key levels updated each morning before the bell, two and a half hours of live daily web webcam coverage in the morning and in the afternoon, and over seven hours of educational videos. All of these links can be found in the description of this video. Come check us out. Thanks for watching. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Hello friends, hope you had a good week. It was certainly an exciting week in the markets and they were seeing some nice linked correlations and we know correlations often change. But right now we've got a really nice correlation with gold being inverse the dollar and gold being inverse the market. So the market and the dollar being linked together. But it's been pretty consistent the past few days and that's always nice when it's consistent. And so the dollar here, we have this long-term potential bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern. Started drawing it when the right shoulder started making its move to the upside. It looked a lot less likely when we were up in the low 102s, but we have now pulled back very significantly and very quickly. So that is making this pattern a lot more viable. And here we are right down around 99.43. That's the level I'm watching. If we close below that level on the daily time frame, we will be looking for that pattern to be confirmed. And what that does is it changes the trend from a clear higher low, higher high trend to now we already have our lower high set. And then that would be a lower low and that would shift our mindset and shift the momentum to the bears on the daily time frame. So we've had a couple bounce attempts after these dumps. Very weak bear flag, continuation to the downside. Looking like a bear flag again. Indecision on this bounce attempt. No strong closes. Upper wicks of profit taking. And we did hit a lower low today. 99.55, 99.53. So the bears still have momentum. Looking at the hourly time frame. We can see that big drop here today. Losing any ground that the bulls had followed through with at that point and now $100 is a very psychological clear resistance level that we rejected from at the high of that bounce so the bears are in full control and look at how the daily chart looks here that bear flag just pointed out potential bear flag forming again and look at gold potential bull flag that's very nice healthy consolidation so in the last video I did we were looking for consolidation after six green days to the upside and actually don't know if that video was public, but six green days to the upside, need some consolidation, healthy cooling off, and we got that. This looks like a very solid bull flag, nice and healthy consolidation, no all-out dump, bulls still maintaining control, and we could look for continuation to the upside. Resistance right now is 1253.06, and then up to 1263.74, that high that we had seen on this bounce. So a huge recovery after the FOMC. Bulls are still very strong on gold, and we had a bit of a red flag early, where I'm watching these key hourly moving average supports, or actually not moving average supports, but consolidation supports, where we have consolidated and built support on the way up. And we did just barely break below a key level. And that was a little bit risky because we didn't build much support on the way up. So it would have been fairly easy to drop down pretty quickly because of that fact, but that did not play out. And we saw market weakness, which led to some gold strength. So gold bulls are still in full control. And we got a downtrend resistance line that we could be watching here i'd be watching that downtrend resistance line on the hourly time frame and watching to see if the bulls are going to hold up strong and if you are a gold bull you want to see the market weak as we saw multiple times the past couple of days and all over the place here today in the market but generally the gold bulls want to see the market weak so where do we stand with these miners gdx is stronger than gdxj and that is because we got this higher high so resistance was 2345. We got up to 2356. And we have some nice consolidation, a long lower wick on Thursday, very tight range here on Friday. So the clear 50 day moving average resistance has rejected the price four times in the last seven days. So that's clearly a level that the bulls have to get above. It's at 2342. But the fact that we do have this higher, low, higher, high pattern still intact favors the bulls because you look at GDXJ and we didn't break to a higher high. We set a lower high, 3857 to 3822. And we very barely held on to support. 
Last thing that the bulls want to see is a lower high and then a lower low. So we had support of 35.68 and 35.74, holding the 100-day moving average support. You can see less of a lower wick on Thursday. The bull didn't buy the dip as significantly. So we are closer to that support, and that's a must-hold level. And if we do see gold consolidate further, we will likely see the bear miners, or I should say the junior miners, break that key higher low pattern on this two-week bounce. And then maybe that'll be a lead indicator because if we get that bear break, the senior miners need to be a bit cautious because we're not going to be too far behind. So on the weekly time frame for GDX, we held the 200-week moving average support three weeks in a row. Saw some follow-through this week, but an upper wick of profit-taking, not a significant amount of follow-through. And watching to see if this 200-week can hold. Losing that 200-week moving average would be a clear red flag. And for the junior miners, look at this 50-week moving average resistance. Four weeks it acted as resistance. Then we got it as support, and it acted as support for four weeks. Now it's back as resistance, and it's rejecting two weeks in a row. That is clearly a level the bulls need to get above to see follow through to the upside. We have an inside bar this week compared to last week, showing that tightening range. And for GDX, we don't have one because we did get that higher high. So those little differences between the two are favoring the senior miners in the short term. And we'll see if that pattern continues with the senior miners being slightly more bullish than the junior miners. So that's what we've got heading into next week. Gold bulls are certainly enjoying where they are sitting on the daily time frame with that healthy consolidation. And again, they want to see market weakness. And anybody that is a bull in any commodity wants to see the dollar lose that 99.43 support, confirm that bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern, and start the lower high, lower low pattern on that daily time frame. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you had a good week. Certainly more excitement coming next week. And we will see you then.